Uh, this is our committee's 17th hearing on climate change, this Congress, but the first with a national security angle. And everybody knows that national security is the number one responsibility of the federal government under our Constitution, so it's appropriate that we consider national security. I agree that climate change presents some national security related challenges, and the chairman laid out a long list of those. However, those challenges pale in comparison to the national security risks associated with our ballooning national debt. As Admiral Michael Mullen, then chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said in 2010, quote, the most significant threat to our national security is our debt, end of quote. And that was when public debt was $9 trillion compared to today's $34 trillion. So it's three times bigger at this point. Our unsustainable national debt threatens our status as an economic superpower and in turn our ability to respond to national threats. We're already set to see interest payments on the national debt surpass defense outlays this year. That's the kind of results you get when spending follows the modern, modern monetary theory approach to spending and government borrowing. Throughout history, fiscal recklessness and economic mismanagement have led to decline of great powers. I left unchecked, excessive red ink will sap away our military superiority and our capacity for global leadership. This would be a tragedy not only for Americans, but for the entire world. From the standpoint of a lot of our friends relying upon us for leadership and for our uh, possible enemies uh, not seeing us as a threat that we hope they would to avoid any conflagration. We've, we've seen from the disastrous results of the Obama administration lead from behind strategy that America's weakness only invites global instability. That doesn't mean that I'm willing to give the Defense Department a blank check. Far from it. If anybody's followed my history in the United States Senate and oversight of wasteful spending in the Pentagon, they would recognize the $450 hammers and the $700 toilet seats. And for years, I pushed DOD to make progress on getting a clean audit, just like every other federal department. And to this very day, the DOD is the only department that has never had a certified audit. Every dollar squandered by the Pentagon is a dollar that's not going towards keeping the country safe. That's something we can't afford at a time of rising threats. Providing for the common defense is one of the federal government's top constitutional responsibilities. So I say that a second time to remind people what we should be doing here in this Congress as our highest priority. As I've said in previous hearings, climate change is a serious issue. And as I referenced earlier, it has some implications for national security and the Pentagon budget. For example, melding sea ice means new shipping lanes and accessible resources in the Arctic. China and Russia are already aggressively staking out their claims in that area. This is a legitimate challenge, and the congressional committees of jurisdiction are giving it due attention. But let's be clear-eyed about our priorities. Climate change is hardly one of the most important challenges that the Defense Department ought to focus its attention on. The Biden administration's obsession with reducing the military's carbon footprint actually distracts from the armed forces' real mission of deterring, 
and defeating our enemies. The administration's rush transition to an electric vehicle fleet appears to be driven more by political posturing rather than military strategy. So you gotta think, good luck finding a charging station in the middle of some foreign battlefield. Similarly, far left climate policy jeopardize our economy, our energy security while undermining our national security. Many European countries learned this lesson the hard way after Russia invaded Ukraine February 22, two years ago, and those European countries are reversing course on some of these uh, uh, climate change issues. Now, Europe is working overtime to increase their capacity to import more liquefied natural gas from the United States since they don't get it from Russia anymore. This may be the committee's only hearing on the defense budget this Congress, so I hope we can take off the climate change blinders and discuss some other national security issues. Climate change didn't cause a rising and aggressive China. It didn't convince Putin to invade Ukraine, and it didn't instigate Hamas' brutal terrorist attack on the Israeli people. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses uh, where they uh, think climate change ranks against some other more pressing uh, national security challenges. I welcome all of today's witnesses, and I especially want to thank Admiral McGinn and Admiral uh, Gallaudet for, uh, and Mr. Dwyer for your services to our country.